Yo, Nicole is in the house. What's up, girl? Hey, Nicole. Huh? Nicole. Nicole, she's a big DJ. She used to live in Lagos. Oh, okay. DJ, I thought, DJ, DJ, I thought whatever. we another Nicole. No, 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 like, no, no. Not Nicole. Not Nicole. Not Nicole. Not Nicole. Nicole is on air. <laughs> she's not on line. That's good. That you're ready. I'm happy that you're ready. Like Freddy. Oh, shit. Where are you going to? I'm a personality of a person. Eh? The ways of a person. The Is thoughts, it recording already? Yeah. The deeds, the actions. It's all based around his heart. Okay. So a man? A man is his heart. A lying, cheating heart means a lying, cheating man. A loving, merciful heart means a loving, merciful man. A living heart means a living man. A dead heart means a dead man. Regardless to man's title, regardless to man's wealth, rank, or position, if the heart is not great, then he cannot be great. But if the heart is great, that man remains great under all circumstances, rich or poor, large or small, so it is the heart that makes one large or small. Mm. Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers in the world, a philanthropist and activist. Let's get to this. No filter, no chill. Hello, my country people. She's the nice one. Always trying to keep him out of trouble. Oh, no, don't it's say like that. <laughs> people are coming. <laughs> yeah, we've not said anything on the show. We've never said anything. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I'm Ifunanya. Join us every time. I know many of you are new to my radio show here. This is the People's Perspective. Yes. TPP on Lagos Talks 91.3. Three. And it starts at 11. Yes, I, with the most beautiful co host. I'll start charging people on this. Uh, TPP. I mean, you can't be just looking at you for free. Oh, my days. All right. A very good morning. It's nine minutes past eleven. This fun, feel fantastic Friday. Welcome to the most enlightening, the most entertaining, the most informative show on radio. It's the midday show with me, Ifunaya, here on Lagos Talks ninety one point three. And as always, Fridays eleven a.m. You already know what we kick off with. Your favorite show, talking about the people's perspective and my. Unequivocal co-host Sheung and Nikolakwa Kuti. Hello, everybody. How on a day? <laughs> How's it going, Sheung? Yeah, I'm happy. You know, good to be back. The, the dream team. The dream team. This is our I first know. show together this year. No. Is this the first? I don't think it's so. the first too. Have we done show together this year? That started at 11 a.m. Actually, yeah. <laughs> the last one that we did together, I did start at 11. Yeah. This is the first show we are doing this, this year. This is the yeah. first one. Yeah, the TPP. <laughs> I love it, I love it. All right, so I know that a lot of people who are tuned in to your live, so we're live on two platforms. We're live on Shion's Instagram as well as our Instagram page at Lagos Talks 913. And I know a lot of people are here because of what's been going on for the past, what, 24, 48 hours on the internet. We're not going to start with that, okay? Because on TPP, what we do is that we highlight the top stories for the week, specifically focusing on politics. And as we know, there has been a build-up, or there is a build-up to the 2023 elections. Um, a whole lot is happening in that um air um aspect as well as what's been going on in nigeria the state of the nation the plight of the people it's the people's perspective so we need to see things through your lens so we're going to be starting with one of the most important areas this is something that literally makes or breaks your way of living it determines the quality of life that you live and i'm talking about the amount of cash hmm. Hmm, hmm, that you hmm, have hmm, or hmm. you have access to hmm, hmm, and we know 
If you are big, you are big. <laughs> if you are big, you are big. Come on, come on. Uh, it's not 3,000. It's just you 2,000. It's 3,000 now. It's not 3K. I'm dumping yeah. money in my pocket. You know if what? It's... I don't know what you are actually. Two. You are, you are richer Ooh, than me. Who is balling like this? <laughs> Who is balling like this? <laughs> Nobody. Three notes. One, one, a new one. Nobody is balling like you. <laughs> Making me rain. People are looking at me in this studio with strong eyes. <laughs> I'm not happy to see these notes. It's unfortunate. Ah, now between Nigeria and New Note and Visa, now I don't know the one we had to get past. You know what? I feel like they are both at par with each other. Abi, <coughs> because the queue for it's ATM ridiculous. passed the queue for embassy. So, so is, it, is it safe to say that a good Valentine's Day present will be bundles? Of because cash. you know of cash yes, because so. before it used to be a thing and people would just you know laugh about Ify. it and smile about it but now Ify. I think that that really makes a good Valentine's Day present. I can confidently dash somebody now one thousand two thousand dollar. I cannot dash you two thousand naira. Eh, okay, you know, you know what? Let's it. practice. Dash me. I say somebody. Not what according to you. you have to say I can confidently <laughs> dash if you one thousand. <laughs> I say somebody. Say call the person's name. No, don't worry. It's a secret. <laughs> are you let, let, are you already cost me gift money that cost that kind of uh, let's not talk on it this thing. By the way, send me your address so they can deliver it. Don't worry, guys, don't ask. Don't worry, this is don't co worry, this business. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so let's get into it now. We understand that there has been a scarcity of the new Naira, mm. you know, due to the new monetary policy by the CBN, the redesign of 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1000 Naira. It has been daunting to actually get your hand on some of these new Naira notes. Now, there has been a back and forth, and there are different narratives that are flowing that we still can't place our finger on what really is the cause. Now, uh, we know that the CBN had set a deadline for the use of or the exchange of the old Naira note for the new Naira note, which is February the 10th. However, this was being appealed against in court and the Apex Court, the Supreme Court, has actually told the federal government to adhere to shifting this deadline because a lot of Nigerians who are trying to be proactive, they went to actually drop their old Naira notes at the banks. And now for them to access the that, new Naira that notes has me to, I, I it messed up. is a huge problem. That that's where I messed up, Nigerian people. Even my daughter, oh. her piggy bank. Oh, I told her to break to... it. Me, the most distrusting of Nigerians. I was trusting of the Nigerian government. Never again. It's unfortunate. Now we get broke at piggy bank. We took all the money. We uh, went to the bank like good citizens. And oh. put it there. So how? What did you explain to her? Did you, have you been able to explain to her that it's not like you're hiding the money? No, she's understanding Nigeria. She on... <laughs> there comes a time in your life. Where you understand your country yeah. in that moment. She, yeah, this is uh, she's moment. Gonna say, ah, it's this our country is not is not alright. She's it's getting it now. But now just you speaking about, you know, the different narratives that we've been hearing. On one hand, the banks have come out to say that they're not getting enough Naira notes, new Naira notes from the CBN. Um, on the other hand, the security operatives had to get involved. I'm talking about the EFCC having to go on surveillance across banks, um, across Nigeria to see if really these banks are hoarding the Naira notes they did actually they arrest yes. yes some black bank employees who are said to have been holding the Naira notes now the CPN has actually come out to say that on a daily they disperse these funds to the banks so there's a narrative that says that the banks are trying to sabotage the new policy whilst the banks are saying we're not getting enough money from CBN and I, I believe, you know, before we even get into the analysis of this, I believe this is, it, it, it could be um, showing of our inability or our lack of capacity to print in terms of the demands that we are seeing right now. We're looking at the Nigeria Security and Printing um, PLC. Um, we know that they had released some data in the past talking about the capacity that they installed and the amount <coughs> that they are able Excuse to me. print per year. Sorry about that, per year. But, 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 but from what has been going on, now my thing is, is this exposing the capacity or the lack of capacity of the printing press or is this really a case of sabotage by the banks against the policy? I think one of the main problems that even the NSPMC has, has in Nigeria printing, I'm happy, I'm not criticize the fact that at least we're trying to print our money in our own country mm -hmm. instead of importing Naira into, as we import petrol to a place where there's crude oil. So let's not, it's a young 
they are still young at it. You know, it's new. So let's mm -hmm. encourage it so that at least it stays that way. Because according to MFA, this is the first money we are printing by ourselves. I mean, it's okay. You know, but I think the major issue is that the Naira itself is not worth the paper is being printed on. That's interesting. Why do you say so? Yes, I mean, I think how much does it cost to print uh, 1,000 Naira? Hmm. You know, let's check it. Maybe $2. $2 mm -hmm. is what? 1,400. You know, so what? <laughs> so, hmm. I mean, we as Nigerians need to come up with our own intelligent and African way of currency. Our yeah. currency is so much not in our control that for me, this is not even the big issue. How about the where our currency has just dipped, yes. people holding the money in their homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this issue of holding money, according to Emifele, you know, was for me kind of mind-blowing when he said they disbursed 3.6 trillion in the Nigerian economy yeah. and only 1.2 trillion are in the banks, you know. So, I mean, definitely some people are just holding money for the sake of Absolutely. looking at it, you know. So... This has to change also. Okay. Maybe it is these same people that have, because of their power and influence, mm -hmm. as they returned their old one, they took all the new ones. Huh. Interesting. Who, who knows? Who, who can doubt? Who can doubt it? You yeah. know, and we sit down every day. You know, this is the issue I have in this country. We have a president in this country. The president is the executive director of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't like looking at... Uh, nations like business yeah. but you know many people in nigeria only understand government in concept of business so when there's this kind of a uh, confusion banks say they don't have money cbnc they're giving them money mm -hmm. it's the president's duty to clear the air okay somebody has to come outside and it's only the president somebody that nobody is above to say this is what is happening is what nigerian people the things we are going through right now is you know what our president's voice mm -hmm. This same president is willing mm -hmm. to travel. Before one word, they don't go Davos. Before they don't go UK. Before he, he's willing to travel anywhere, he's old. Yeah. He stress himself. Mm -hmm. But to just go inside TV room mm -hmm. in Asso Rock and tell Nigerians, oh, my people, this is what is happening. Oh, relax. We are going to do this. So we know for a fact. Don't be saying CBN say we have money. But if the CBN has given money, let president tell us mm. that I have the documents here that are shown that the CBN has given. I mean, because these things have paper trail, yeah. but we the citizens can, and we put you there to protect our interests. Mm. So, so I mean, I mean, there's a few things that I just want us to address because you're expecting that the president will come out to make a statement. However, in his tenure, you know, hardly did we see him come out to address, you know, specific issues that affected um, the general public. So I don't know that when it's towards the end of his tenure, no, we're what I'm expecting saying. that no, to that happen. That is the vacuum. Yeah. This is the vacuum that is making the situation worse. This is the vacuum because we are operating without information. Indeed. So there's panic. Yeah. Nobody really knows what's going on. Is it Amy Philly that is lying? Mm. Is it the banks that are lying? So nobody knows. You know, banks are closing down. And during the week, people need money. People don't have money. People are stuck. My, so my, my trumpeters couldn't even come to rehearse house oh, on wow. Wednesday. And I'm in the middle of writing an album. So on Wednesday, I was just busy working with my reading section all day. I could not make progress on my job. Because it's not even about we that we can move around in our cars. It's not about people that work for us that are not driving. Exactly. That need money to enter transport to come mm. to work. You know? So this thing is affect is snowballing into so many. Now I want us to you know analyze from a narrative that says that this is somewhat connected to the upcoming elections because we're seeing if the bankers are saying we're not being giving enough notes and the CBN is saying no we're giving we're dispersing enough every day. What does that have to do? Because like I mentioned earlier, there are different narratives. What does that have to do with the upcoming elections? There are some people that have said, oh, you know, they're trying to stop vote buying. How does that affect vote buying? Uh, no, the money this... for buying vote has already been secured. <laughs> Seriously, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please don't let anybody tell you that this money scarcity is affecting anybody that needs to buy votes. Because they've already bought the votes before now. I keep telling people, it's not the 1,000 mm. and the 2,000. Or 5,000 that they give the poor people to vote on election day, that is the vote buying. The vote buying actually starts when bankers help them launder the money they will use to buy the votes. When press people take brown envelope to uh, uh, launder these people's images to the public mm -hmm. and make them look like some kind of 
demigods, you know. So this this act by the professionals of Nigeria already is the vote. It has happened. You understand? Mm -hmm. The people, INEC officials have already compromised. The police, the army, you know, the people that will do the job have already, they are ready, they've been paid. So all that one, one thousand you see and then the same professionals that are taking their own money mm. before election, they will just start chatting, hey, we'll stop taking it, five thousand for election. You know? <laughs> that is not vote, that is not the vote buying. <laughs> okay. That is not the vote buying. That is, by that time it's too late. Because what do you want the the uh, the common man to do? To do about no, your envelope as journalist don't secure. Oh. You know, as musician you don't go do your own show. You don't secure. You know, banker you don't learn that. You don't secure. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't secure. You call this poor man. He say me you know secure. What what, what, are, what are your thoughts about um, another narrative that's that that says that this is a taint of the current administration to affect you know people's perspective when they go to vote for this particular uh, political party if if at all they're going to be voting for this political party in the next elections well you know for me you know they said if it walks like a dog quacks like a dog mm. you know swims like a dog is most likely a dog you know and uh, nigerians are quite a historical obviously we forget things too quickly mm. you know just rewind yourself to 2015 the last time you know who are, who, are, who are trying to change an administration in this country. You know, this is the same way. This is uh, how the elites also negotiate. Everybody negotiates their interests. Yeah. This is the period, you know. If you look at during Jonathan's era, everything too shut down. Except this, this money one is new. Mm. Because we didn't have currency change in at 2015. The time. Yes. But there was no petrol. There was no diesel. In fact, MTN was going to shut down some telco shut down mm. this one shut down gstv said they only have diesel for one week or something <laughs> it was ridiculous i believe people forgot it it was ridiculous you know so the elites of nigeria you know are not above you know putting hardship mm. on the majority of nigerians for their own selfish interest you know i mean all right um if you are listening please feel free to join the conversation what are your thoughts about the back and forth currently uh, being experienced in the area of the naira note the scarcity of the newly redesigned naira note we would like to also know what your experience has been like just driving down our road it is <laughs> immense. you know at first it started with the petrol queues now it's hmm. the, the the human traffic at the atms and I also even saw this in Potakot, where I happened to it have visited ridiculous. recently. Um, I thought it was really bad in, in Lagos. <laughs> Wait till you go to other parts of, of, go to of Songo. Nigeria. Go to Songo. You know, Lagos, you know, this is a city. Lagos, one street, I mean, at least in, in the heart of Lagos, Allen alone, my area, Allen, we have at least nine banks mm. with at least 40 ATMs. Wow. Some areas. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> one ATM for the old local government. <laughs> You go seek you, you say go fear. Let's get your calls. What are your thoughts? Please feel free to join the conversation. Um, and, and just looking from your perspective, indeed, where do you think uh, the possible fault lies? Is it with the bankers who are hoarding the cash or the CBN who is not giving out or disbursing enough uh, Naira notes to these different banks? 0809-234-5913. 0809 You can also call us up on WhatsApp um, and send a message on WhatsApp as well. Our WhatsApp line is 0809 Lagos Talks. Lagos Talks, good morning. What's your name? Please turn off your radio. Uh, good morning. Hi, good morning. What's your name, please? Yeah, this is Tonero from Olympia Papa. All right, let's hear you. I don't know. They said today is the deadline, so nobody's having any news concerning whether they have postponed the date or nothing has been said. And those are confused whether to continue the old Naya note or not to, not to uh, continue the, old, the new Naya note. So we are confused right now. A lot of people are confused. And the banks are shutting down. So Indeed. there's so many yeah. things happening right now. So I want to let us be aware. Yes. The president uh, has not spoken. The CBN has not spoken. They say today is the deadline. Yes. Because today is not the deadline. So we don't know who, who are we listening to. <laughs> what is the CBN going to do? Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes. Because they are not going to do anything. Yes
Or the Supreme Court? That's a that's a good question. So a lot of ambiguity. We need we need the number one citizen of this country. We need him. You know, this is the time you need to. I mean, look at your children. I mean, we are the children of this government. Government is our father. We are the children. Look at your children. Look at how we are suffering on the streets. We are not saying come and come, uh, perform miracle. We are not even saying come and end the crisis. Just come and tell us what is going on. It's rather unfortunate that a lot of times we have seen instances where the ah. government was tone deaf because you just made a statement. You said the people are suffering. You know, this is not the first time that the people unfortunately have been subjected to <laughs> such treatment. So my question is, how were they treated in the past and what do we expect, you know, differently right now? Do we expect them to, you know, you know well, at least be, that time, be, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know why this time is different? That time at least. In the suffering, mm. if you can hustle your way mm -hmm. to some cash, <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You can ameliorate <laughs> some of this suffering. But now, if after you hustle, Lucky. the cash to not even balance the suffering, you can't get your hands on it. So somebody has to come out because right now both the hand both of our hands are tied. Mm. You know? The hand the hand of a, a, a the, the suffering the hand of a suffering. Mm. You know. Inside. <laughs> they be hard to hustle out of the suffering. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this one from WhatsApp. Um, Lagos Talks. Hi, good morning. What's your name? Um, Ah, uh, my name's Sig. Welcome to the show. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Lagos. All right, welcome. Let's hear you. Join the conversation, please. Okay, I, I think we have a lot of work to do. Hmm. Because I don't stay in Nigeria, I stay in South Africa. And it's so crazy the way things have gone. Like, you know, we have bad roads. There's a lot of work that we need that needs to be done. Mm. So, right now, I think the only thing I want to address now is for us as a Nigerian. We all know who this man is, and he, you know, handling the the materials for the INEC is actually a big, you know, red flag for us. All right. You know, Thank you. Thank I you. Know, I don't know what she wants to say about it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's let's um, start with sticking with what we're talking about right now, and then we will, you know, graduate to other things. Hey, guys, folks. Please start off your radio. Good morning. What's your name? Uh, my name is Jimmy Simon. All right, let's hear you. I'm calling from Ogun State. All right, from Ogun State. What are your thoughts? Okay. In fact, I want to know because exactly what the first caller was saying, that they contain a narrow issue. Because everybody's confused now. They don't know where to stand again. This is what we're talking about, the yeah. ambiguity and the uncertainty. Somebody okay. needs to say something. Somebody with some... The final word is with the president here. I mean, yeah. whether, whether we like it or not. And even with the Supreme Court, how is it being enforced? President. So the decision by the Supreme Court, how is that being enforced? Because like someone mentioned, there are some banks that are like, you know what? They're not going to stress me out. They're just closing up. You know, and this is where for me, I just feel like the elites of this country continue to let us down in every sector. You know, whether it be it's the telecoms, mm. you know, we give them billions. They are billionaires for me, charging us an arm and a leg. But just to provide quality service, invest in the infrastructure. The money they will use to buy this in a they will take and go chase gear. The money to <laughs> build new masks, in a they will take and buy a new car. You know, employ good uh, uh, technicians, go and train your take our local boys, send them to MIT, send them to all these big schools, invest in them, let them come back and use their expert. In a lie. Same thing with the banks. You've not put bank branch in every corner of this country. Yet, as Bank MD, you have houses in every corner of the world. You understand? This myopia is 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 what is destroying this country. Now look at all of them uh, 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 going to meet presidential candidates. Your job as bankers, you have not done it. <laughs> the whole country is reeling from the pain right now. Instead of them to tell us, the, work on the solution of how their banks can stay open and give Nigeria some some banking services. Now lie is politicians that are chasing all over the place, yeah. doing meeting with politicians up and down shining teeth you know so for me i mean this is this is why i have no i have no belief in these people yeah. because they really don't have any love you know you don't show that they have any love because all of them they all have two two country anyway you know all of them have two two countries 
You are not all Nigerians. Everybody have a house everywhere in the world. Anything happen here, they will run away, I guess. Maybe that's why they behave like that. Because if you are the elite of a country, you should be doing things so that people will be envious of your country. Indeed. This is the only, these are the only people that are, they don't want people to, you don't want to live, like, look at my country. You don't want to be proud of your country. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be proud of your house. Look at my house. Mm -hmm. Look at my car. Look at my place. How about being proud of your country? At least do your job. You know, do your job. All right, so we're going to be moving on to other stories that have been trending. But uh, before we do that, I know that we've been getting comments via Sheon's Instagram Live as well as uh, Instagram Live at Lagos Talks 913. And I want us to get some comments uh, from there before we move on. Sheon, what are your people saying? Uh, uh, okay, apart from the Peter B and... Uh, no, we're gonna get that, get into that. No, but there's the argument of that. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, someone, okay, they're arguing let me about look that for a amongst question. themselves. Okay, mm. so Joy, is there anything on our our Instagram? Well, it's almost the same thing. So someone is saying, "Market your candidate and let us let us make our choice." Okay, okay. So speaking about, it's like you're really here yeah. for this um, mm. candidate conversation. We're gonna get into that shortly. Let's take this call. Lagos talks. Good morning. What's your name? Hello? Lagos Talks, good morning. What's your name? Please turn Hello. off your radio. Hello, Ethan. How are you? Very well, thank you. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Val. My name is Val. Uh, uh, Val, how are you? Are you yeah, ready for your birthday? I'm all right. I'm doing great. Thank you. Val, right. for this time. Yeah. So, so what? We'll wait for you later on. But for this particular uh, topic, uh, this CBN issue, I think the problem is where the issue of that um, um, selling of votes to come in it will be the liquidity level within the system. Now, if they say 3.2 trillion within the system, and only 500 billion is within the bank, the only thing they needed to do was to stop up. Now, if they introduce this currency, I think they did, um, they did a, a kind of defense, right? um, reducing the quantity that was supplied within the system. Mm. Instead of saving 1.4 to 7 trillion, and the same thing, let's say 300 billion, and they send that into the system. The only issue now is to bust those money efficiently. Then if you bust 300 billion, by 500 billion or 1.2 trillion comes back, you can't. Ooh, okay. Wow. Then in order to control. Hello? All right. Hello? Yeah, we, 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 we lost you at some point. To control. Okay, I said what they needed to do was to try to control the money to supply the the system. So if you send 300 billion, what you would have done was to ensure. Val, we apologize. We can't really hear you, but thank you for your contribution. Okay, swiftly, let us move on to a conversation that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to over the past 24 hours. Um, Shen, you have been trending across social media platforms. You did go on a I have? podcast. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, my God. You did go on a podcast where you, as usual, were very unequivocal about your stance, especially on the 2023 elections. And um, we, did, we do believe that that sparked or triggered some responses, especially from musicians now taking a look at maybe a couple of things that you had mentioned regarding um the labor party candidates so i don't want us not to just, only the labor party I know, candidates I, I, that, listen i don't want us to only just dwell on that because i know that that triggered a whole lot but i want us to you know take out the next couple of minutes assessing the three candidates of the three top political parties who are vying for presidency and the reason why i say this is no doubt that these three individuals have a large following people backing them and these individuals amongst or within their portfolios or their manifesto their specific areas of strength of which they are pushing as their main narrative of oh this is the reason why i should be the next president of nigeria taking a look at you know atiku abubakar if you look at his manifesto especially things coming from his followers you know him representing the pdp you would always hear them talk about him um, helping with the consolidation of banks in nigeria at the time when he was the vice president if you take a look at tinubu who is the apc candidate vying 
for presidency. You would hear people talk about how he championed the modernization of Lagos State. If you take a look at the Labour Party candidate, Peter Obi, you hear people talk about his uh, financial management prowess, especially when he was governor of Anambra State. You know, they come up with these three major areas as reasons why they think they should be the president and the followers and, and the supporters also say that those are major reasons why they believe that these people would 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 make a good president but you also made a statement you know when you were um, on the podcast talking about nigerians being the ones who can actually save themselves talking about nigerians being the answer if we you know, mobilize. And I know that we keep talking about this and we've talking about this, you know, even prior to the elections, talking about Nigerians mobilizing. Yeah. So I, I, I want to know from your perspective, you know, um, on one hand, you say Nigerians should mobilize. On the other hand, Nigerians are saying, you know what, these are the three, you know, candidates that we believe would make a good president. So what are your thoughts about that? Isn't that mobilization enough or you think they're mobilizing for the wrong reasons? Maybe they didn't understand the point, but I guess... A lot of people did on actually did understand the point mm. the point is that nigeria is not run by the president alone you know so for putting all this energy into voting for a president why not also put the same energy into removing the governors and the senators in the state assembly and the national assemblies why not bring in a full team that can actually deliver what we want you know but when we start pushing the Messiah syndrome, it means we're not really interested in our country. You know, I mean, we did the, I, we, we did the Messiah syndrome eight years ago. I was 32. Buhari is coming to save Nigeria. Buhari is coming to save Nigeria. I'm 40 years old now. The experiment is a failure, mm. you know. So are we going to do another Messiah experiment for another eight years? And if you know, the first thing I said was, I first said, Shobure, you know, who is my favorite? I said yeah. it. This is why I don't work with him. Because I told him we have to find a, we have to have a broader movement that is not only championing Shore but championing senators for each, each state. We are bringing all these people to the fore. And we are bringing a full new administration to the people, not championing some kind of uh, messiah, psycho fancy mm. Nigeria hey, dancing behind one person as if you just go there and wave one magic wand. Because it's impossible for any president in Nigeria that is not in PDP or APC to control the Senate. That is PDP and APC control. I mean, even Buhari, mm. that was APC. Do you remember what he did for his first four years? Mm -hmm. He was fighting with his own senators. Mm -hmm. His own senators were doing him Maradona, mm -hmm. left, right, and center. Bukola Saraki showed him Pepe. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so I mean, and this is they were in the same party. So now imagine somebody from a different party. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Now let's go to the states. How about the states? Lagos State, um, especially. Look at what happened during NSAS. Is there nobody's talking about a candidate to replace uh, the party that is that's been ruling Lagos for how many years? Mm -hmm. If you really don't like Ashwaju, and you say Tunubu is a, a bad person, was he president before he became all the things you say you don't like about him? Isn't it this Lagos State that made him those things that you complain about? Mm -hmm. So if you really say. Is it by him not being president that he will become weak? If he doesn't become president, he remains as he is. Hmm. He remains as he is, which is extremely powerful already. Okay. So what are we saying? If you are truly for the benefit of the Nigerian people, we won't be looking only at a messiah. We won't be looking at all the ways. And that's the point that I was making. And I was saying to people, if you listen to the whole podcast, that this energy we are using to follow messiah now, hmm. because it's cool. This is the time to do politics. I hope not as soon as we do it, we will not stop and forget that we still have work to do in front of us. Mm. Because no Messiah can come as nobody can save Nigeria. Except Nigerian people put in the work. Except we make sure that we continue organizing, working towards bringing a people's movement. To remove this elite from power. Are we not tired of these rich people just ruling us for their interest? You know? Then Peter P. Square. Because I said uh, Peter Obi is an opportunist. By the definition of the word, okay. when somebody takes advantage of a situation, it makes him an opportunist. Now, opportunism is not necessarily bad, especially in business. In business, opportunism is golden. It's the golden ticket. You know, you are preparing, you meet your opportunity, you strike. Mm. That is business, profit and loss. But in politics, 
opportunism is bad. Mm. Whether we like it or not, opportunism doesn't work well in politics. Because politics is not profit and loss. Politics is life and death. Life and death and profits and loss are two different things. So, you know, opportunism is great. Everybody likes an opportunist in business. But in politics, it's a different thing. You understand? And I pointed that out. And as a Nigerian, as a citizen of this country, I have the right to criticize anybody that says he wants to be my president. Mm. I have the right to look through anybody and say, that doesn't give anybody the right, except that candidate. If the team really, the candidate feels that what I've said, you know, is a... Uh, he doesn't represent him. He can come up with a rebuttal. He, spoke, he has spokespeople. Oh, what Mr. Shimon put That I would respond in a political way. We can start a political conversation. If their supporters are talking, I won't answer. But if people like Peter P. Square not feel that they want to personally attack me based on the political opinion, mm -hmm. uh, we'll go enter one trouser. We'll go enter one trouser. Because they, you, know, you can't even happen. I mean, I cannot be bullied, especially cyber bullying. Virtual bullying, bullying when they come out here for person body. <laughs> you know, I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. You know. So and I also made statements like that about even Shore mm. and people from AAC have not jumped on my head. You know, to start calling me names and all sort of uh, 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 saying all sort of things about my family. You know. All right, so before we carry on with this, this is coming from uh, Omajua from Delta saying, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude towards Shewo Kuji for his enlightening message this morning. He touched on the important issues of Mr. Peter and his brother, as well as the current challenges facing Nigeria, such as the fuel and bank crisis. Shewo Kuji's emphasis on knowing one's history and roots is truly inspiring and serves as a reminder of the significance of understanding our past. I also applaud Chiyon Kuti for addressing the larger issue of hierarchical structures and lack of accountability in Nigeria by promoting individual responsibility and working towards creating a more equal society. We can overcome these challenges and create a brighter future for our country is what he is saying. This is from Michael saying good morning, Ifi and Big Bird Kuti. Well done, guys. Um, please. Shehun tread softly with Peter P. Square. After election, Nigeria will still remain. Let's stop the bashing and insults. These are rulers, not leaders, and they're not meant to die for everyone. And everyone should be guided. So that is from... Uh, well, I, mean, I didn't bash anybody. They come meet me now. I didn't see anything about uh, P. Square or anybody. Uh -huh. You know, that they feel they be power mic <laughs> and mighty ego. You Let's know? take this call from uh, Olurami from Tottenham. Hello, good morning. Good morning, that is me, Shem Kuti. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Hermie. How's it going? Yeah, this is Graham from Tottenham. I'm hey, my friend. Ah, there you go. Not good, yeah. Ah, I'm going to get that bad. Ah, you did. Up, Arike. Up, Arike. Up, Arike. No friends, babe. You see, the only source of depression for Tottenham people now is. <laughs> I don't know if he sleep. When I don't yeah, sleep I for now, that area. It is too red. It is too red over there. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You see, um, so I totally agree in a broad, broad spectrum of political examination. I totally agree with your line of thinking. Because when you look at um, political movement around the world, especially contemporary movements, carry on contemporary contemporary movement, you see, like in Germany now, the Green Party is now a part; it's not part of the coalition. And many years ago, nobody cared about the Green Party, but they persisted in building up their movements. In South Africa today, you have economic freedom fighter. Julius Malema. Yes, the EFF. Yeah, it's not, he probably might not become the president until his dying day, but he's making impact. I mean, you have a range of these people all along. Now, Colin Peter will be an opportunist. I totally agree, but you, you have to take your chance or chances at every point in time. That's what he did. And by the way, he did not contest for the PDP primary. He actually dropped out before the primary. But I think at this point in time, 
Nigeria are faced with making a difficult choice, eighteen presidential candidates. I think it's now ready. It's now the time for people to use their brain. Make a choice. Either you will choose. I mean, you have a guy who said he wants to keep your children in school for eight years, and he, he, he vowed to do so, and he even has you to call him bastard if he didn't achieve that. If that's good enough for you, make your choice. Personal attack on ordinary citizens attacking one another is not the way at all. We need to really build this movement. The redemption we seek will not come in 2023. I think we should think of how to build a bigger movement so to sweep this um, political entrepreneur out of uh, power. Thank you very much. Thanks. I mean, you, have, you, have, you made my point exactly. Yeah. You know, and as I said, if you see your chance and you take, it's not, I'm not criticizing that. That is what it is. That is what he did. You know, for me, I don't support that in politics because of my own political leaning. It's not by force. As it's 18 political candidates, 18 in this country right now. Look at all these parties have senators, they have governors. My issue with the press is why are we not highlighting these people? Why are we not bringing their educational background to the fore? Uh, they are places where they worked before, their ideas. Why are we focusing Nigerians on these same people that have been there, done that, had their chance, you know, and so, did, didn't do anything? Yes, and, and, and that's a very, very pertinent point to highlight. However, Sharon, um, just looking at the mindset of the electorates themselves who are more comfortable in aligning with someone that they've known for such a long time, don't you think that that also does play a role in the inability or the difficulty from How us did moving they know these people? from where we are to a better Nigeria? Did, these people go, did they go to all, all Nigerians' houses to knock on their door and introduce themselves? Hmm. They are known by the... It's through the media. And this is why I say the media keeps dropping the ball in this country. There is a massive brown envelope. They don't know if they do their work. If the work no relate to envelope, there is, it is not worth doing. Hmm. And that's the problem. Until... We as Nigerians take our responsibility in every faction of this country. As a journalist, don't wait for brand envelope to tell the truth and do your job. If candidates need exposure, do your investigation. Nigeria has 18 candidates. Do your investigation and let the people know the truth. That is your responsibility in the media. That is your responsibility. If Nigerians don't know the truth about the presidential candidates of this country and are not familiar with them, it's not our fault. It's because our media is not telling us the information that we need to make the right decisions. Mm. That's why I keep telling Nigerians that. So in that case, please try and make your own decision by yourself. You understand? If people are letting you down, now not just follow the bandwagon and drop your brain. Mm. It's the time for you to now. We also move because there, there are specific factors that we always have to consider when we are making analysis of politics in Nigeria and governance in general. We know that we are strong in identity politics. So aside, you know, the role of the media, which is very key, we're the fourth realm, right? What about identity politics where people are more aligned based on ethnicity and religion? Yes, that also, um, that also is born out of the lack of development of Nigeria. Hmm. Because they are not, as I've said, we as the professionals of Nigeria, we have not done our job really, you know. That's why we always want to mortgage our destiny to all this, instead of us to do our job. Our job as professionals of Nigeria, I said it in one of my life. Say, we way our ancestors don't have to open eye. Not be just say, make only with the sea. We mm -hmm. open eyes so that we can help our brothers to open eye. We have to help the people of this country. We, we don't know. We have some little comfort with this oppression. We have to invest some of our resources into organizing ourselves to build bridges with our brothers that have less, that are in the rural areas, that are in the so-called ghettos, that are in the so-called slums and yeah. shanty towns. We need to go to them with the information of this world that we have, with the knowledge that we have. Help them see the light. Help them know what is going on. Organize with them. That is the only way that we can remove the yoke of these people from our and the, the boot of these people from our throats. Mm. Because so far, they are the only ones that go to those people and lie to them and give them all sorts of conspiracy theories and uh, 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 fantasy stories on what's wrong, Tell, pointing them to their fellow poor brother as the. Uh, let me tell you an example, for example. Mm -hmm. Everybody now in, in southern Nigeria hates headsmen. Headsmen, 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 right? Yeah. This is simply because this is the uh, people that control the poor, 
these are the poor people on the end of this crisis. Mm -hmm. We forget that every headsman is an employee of a rich Nigeria. Every headsman is employed by a rich Nigeria. Why are they not mentioning the name of their employees and employers? Yes, who are their employers? Headsmen, headsmen. They say headsmen, uh, they just fall from heaven. Mm. So this is how the media is able to manipulate information. Simple, like headsmen work for someone. It is the job of the Nigerian. If the government doesn't want to do their job, Concord newspaper is the one that let Nigerians know what happened in OD. Yeah. This was one of the last um, vestige of um, investigative journalism in this country. Mm. That is what the media is. That Obasanjo and his regime went, or rather his administration, but when you are killing your own people, not the regime be that, I don't know what to say. Anyway, Obasanjo and his administration went to that town because of Kenun Wega okay. that killed those policemen and killed everybody. Nobody said anything. The government did not tell us that it happened. Uh, the police did not come and report that such a thing that the military came to commit a crime there. Yeah. There were no investigations. Nobody knew. It had happened in 1999. Uh, the work of liberation. They just come and give us rhetoric. We'll line up behind their back. And in our act of acting in their act, we now say that we are acting. That's an illusion of action. We are not acting. Only the political players right now are acting. You supporting them is not you acting. That's not acting. That's an illusion of action. Because that's not your act. You don't know what decision did he make with you. What do you know he's planning? Except what they've told you. Because you are not you organized with them. You didn't build with them. So, Shio, a lot of the things that you have said are heavily predicated on, you know, reorientation because you've spoken about how individuals act in their own little sphere of influence. You yeah. did mention, you know, lecturers having to take monies from students, you know, as bribe to pass them and things like that. Um, where does this reorientation come from? You know, because a lot of people have, based on their experience of Nigeria, they've come to a point where it's either kill or be killed. You know, it's 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 a jungle out there. Uh, you know, the the race is for the swift. The the strongest man wins, and and obviously that is um, um, also predicated on selfishness. Yes. Right. Having to want to self preservation, <coughs> I should say. Right. Which could be selfishness to to, to, yes, to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so how do, where where does that orientation come from? Where where people are looking around them and they're like, but I need to take care of myself you yes. know other people out there are not looking to take care of me so mm. why should i also make that sacrifice i wonder what would have happened to us if Nkrumah thought like that mm. if pa mike modu who led the three million uh, man strike in this country that led directly to the independence of nigeria even though they don't mention his name because he was a poor man because well, you don't know it was poor people that liberated this country the coal miners of enugu and Aba. The market women of Abba, the market women of Abelkuta, of Lagos. And they erased their name from history and they, they start telling you about Olowo and Zeke and uh, Amadou Bello, Oyibo boys, that bamboo, that they used to bamboozle us and sell us Oyibo dream as, an in, as independence. If these real independent fighters, the freedom fighters, like Nkrumah and Paimodu in Nigeria and Thomas Sankara and Lumumba, if they had thought like that, Will you even be able to use the phone today? Will you be able to enter a bus? Do you know in this country, in this your own country, at one time, you are not allowed to enter this island. This island, all of us, did like this. It was only for Oyibo and their special blacks, like the Zeke Sanko and the Aulo was. Do you know that? It was some people that fought for you to have the right in your country to even to vote in your own country, to have a job, you know, to go to school. Somebody had to sacrifice something. So when we are still in the mindset, you know, when we are still in the mindset, but also it is yeah. difficult for us, you know, you have to understand that Africa, even though we are suffering, there was we were, we were in the midst of plenty. Mm. There was still some sovereignty people could eat. Our education was still, you know, even though we didn't have formal education, we were still connected to our traditional education. So people knew things. Yeah. You understand? They weren't stupid, they weren't hungry and stupid. You understand? They were just oppressed. So uh, they could look beyond the next meal. They could sacrifice. They could fight. And we are tired of this situation. You understand? But we live in a situation today where those things have been... Education has been taken. Uh, hunger has been 
enforced. So it's it, it probably a harder decision to make today. You understand? Mm. So I see a lot of people, you know, even the lecturer that is taking bribe, if it was paid where, will he take bribe? Mm. Who knows? Right? If our police were paid maybe forty, fifty thousand dollars a year salary, yeah. they and giving free housing, free education for their children, free health care, you know, would they be like that on the road? Who knows? Because whether we like it or not, we are all products of our elites mm. who educate us. And if I've read Paulo Ferrer, Paulo Ferrer's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, you know that we all, we are all oppressors. Until we take a moment to self-reflect. You have to self-reflect. Me too, until I read that book and realized, I didn't know that being trained by my oppressor made me an oppressor. You know, even among musicians that continue to shout, hey, I want to be, I like the people, I like the people. Look at anybody, you want to give anybody money, we start behaving like our oppressor. Because we've been taught in society that they are the examples of society. That is how to be. All right, you know, let's, let's take a few more messages and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, this is coming from Sidri saying, good morning, if you're chill. Big Brad, I totally agree with your deep thinking and school of thought. This is coming from a listener saying, mm. um, it's not only politicians who keep the new note at home in Bayelsa. Bus driver said he has enough new Naira notes stored in his house. Chika is saying, Chico, I feel you as always, but can I ask who knew about Labour Party before Obi joined them? Is it not Labour Party that took opportunity of Obi's character? Uh, uh, why, can you, why can't you talk like this? Labour Party, everybody knew Labour Party. This is coming from Kelowinski <laughs> saying, Meanwhile, Chico, I know if it reached P Square, this Una Wahala and I just people with different opinions with some level of emotions attached. This is coming from a listener saying, Please tell. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Uh, this one is coming from a listener saying, um, if Peter Obi wasn't in politics before now, he could pass for an opportunist. The implication of not concentrating your energy on a short-term decision of presidential candidates is that you give legitimacy to the wrong candidates. If some candidate on the ballot wins, the media, the media, you, you, the media you enjoy can be gone. They test run, run this already. After four years and the deed is done. Uh, this one is coming from a listener saying, thank you, Sharon, for mentioning the educational sector. Just last night, my sister, I knew like running a DLI was complaining about if she should go ahead or just stick to her fashion career. <laughs> this is coming from a listener, <coughs> sorry. Um, one who last saying, I would like to ask Sharon about where and how the people need to take over which he often mentions um you know what we can't touch on that right now because we have run out of time but don't worry this happens every friday from 11 a.m so we'll keep talking about this is a build up towards the elections 2023 miami saying good morning big bird don't mind them boss we are solidly behind you all right it's 12 and this is where we say goodbye thank you so much to everyone who was a part of the show we have been getting calls Sheon Kuti's Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us and via our Instagram live at Lagos. MySpace actually still yeah, exists. Yeah, nobody's on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. You can reach out to me on Instagram at ify underscore i. That is i f y underscore i um are you saying bye okay bye yes, <laughs> and follow lagos talks as well yeah 91.3 at lagos talks 913 9 on um instagram and twitter and big